So if you're into a real challenge of building and like something a little bit bigger, this is a really nice kit for you to do. Hello, this is BJ from Hearns Hobbies and I'm gonna be looking at this today. It's quite a nice men kit. Uh, one knife scale of the BMW R9T. So the R9T, I don't know a lot about bikes, but I do like their shape. So apparently this particular bike was designed to be easily customizable. They've designed different harnesses for the electrics uh, so that you can easily pull them apart, put different fairings, different uh, wheels. Uh, front suspension is also different, different seats. I'm sure there's different sort of fairings and other bits as well. So let's get into it and see what it's all about. Now it's a very thick box as you can see, there's a lot in it. And also being knife scale, it is also quite a large kit for a motorcycle. Now Protar and uh, well, now Italeri have got a, quite a few one knife scale bikes. And I think one knife scale fits in very nicely with the more common 12 scale, which is already a very nice kit. And also the huge one six scale, which is done by Tamiya. So right in between. All right, let's have a look inside. All right, start off with, you got this really nice box art on the front. Actually, it looks photographic, but it's actually uh, a painting. Some photos of the actual bike. And then you've got some different options here because you do get some uh, decals inside to allow you to do different versions of the bike. Okay, let's open her up and have a look. Okay, it's jam-packed as you can see. It's a very thick box, lots of parts in there. Let's have a look at the first lot. All right, this is quite a large sprue. Black sprue here, reminiscent of Tamiya style motorcycle kits as well. Quite often they'll have uh, their silver, white and uh, black sprues. This has got a lot of the mechanical parts on it. You've got uh, parts for the engines, you've got the wheels right here. Uh, you've got big headlight. Okay, you can see the headlamp on that side. Uh, the, the clutch cover, which is really nice. It's got all the, the cutouts. And then on the inside of the wheels here, you can also see there's just some really fine, I guess you call them grooves, because this is where you're going to be dropping in the spoke inserts. And we'll get to the spokes in a moment. The spokes look pretty good. You've got your uh, rear vision mirrors there. Some very nicely molded calipers. And you'll also notice too that when I hold it like this, you can see how the sprue is at these angles here. That means it's been slide molded. That means several molds are going in through the side to give additional detail to this side. So that's how we can get all this really fine details on these calipers on every facet of this particular model. If it was a, if it was a standard double-sided um, mold, then all this detail here would be all rounded off and it'll look pretty plain. So you can see how technology in mold making has achieved this extra detail, which is good for us. All right, move on to another big sprue, another black sprue. Okay, this time we've got a lot more of the engine. Okay, so you've got your engine components here. Quite nicely how all the cooling fins are being molded in. Let me see if I can sort of get that so you can see that. Super fine. Again, you can see from this end, slide molded, so you can get all the fins across the top as well. And just the way that the engine has been separated into its parts really gives you the impression of building the engine uh, by yourself, like the real one. You've got a variety of different fairings here. Now, not being a bike person, I don't really know where all the bits are, but here you can see the top of the battery. You can see the individual cells for where all the water would go, the terminals on the ends. This appears to be the top of the tank. Got the BMW symbol just in the center there, all molded in nice and crisply. Okay, so that's one, another big bit of bits. All right, so now we get into some silver components. This almost has a, uh, a degree of pearlescence in it. Now that's from the plastic itself. So they've added this, this finish to the plastic. It's quite interesting. So I think if you built this without painting, it'll still look fairly decent. But obviously painting would make it uh, just look absolutely fantastic. All right, so the other side. Again, you've got some slide molding on this, this end here. So we've got the, uh, the seat support here. Got some sort of cover along the side. This looks like uh, on the side of the, uh, the tank. Parts of the front suspension over here as well.
then other bits that I'm not too familiar with that that'll probably be the uh, registration plate okay so that's that part there and then we get into this one here now what Ming have done is they've used multiple materials as well so this is a framework which in general is as you can see it's very thin and that would be generally quite delicate so these parts are molded out of ABS which is an engineering type plastic which is has a lot of give Just give everything extra strength. Now ABS does need a different type of adhesive to put together, but this kit is designed to be quite, uh, well, mostly screwed together, I think. There is a, a bag, uh, a huge bag of tiny screws. And from here, you can see the points where you've got locating pins, but there are points which will accept the screws too. So I don't think you'll need to worry about any ABS adhesive at all. Really nice touch. Okay, so you've got multiple pieces here. You've got four pieces which are molded in ABS plastic. All right, from there, we've got this part here. And this huge chunky bit here, um, I don't really know. You've got the radiator here, and then this is the rear which supports the seat. And this is the part that looks like a gearbox, but I don't really know, but I'll find out in the, in the manual, sure enough, soon. All right, and then we have some engine covers molded in white again slide molded so you can get these super fine cooling fins across the the sides here in the past before you had slide molds that would need to be molded in two parts to be able to get all that detail and you need to glue it together but all in one makes it a lot easier all right over here we've got uh i'm guessing these are exhaust parts no they won't be they'll be parts of the forks Okay, again, slide mold, you can see here, all the holes already molded in. So, both sides. Some more white parts here. Oh, lift the staple, just get that out. There's the exhaust. And then the ends of the exhaust here as well. See how these are undergated as well, which gives you the opportunity to paint while it's on the sprue. And as you cut it, you won't be affecting those parts at all. Both sides are undergated. Okay. All right, here we get into the wheels. So the wheels, oh, actually we saw the wheels before. These are the spokes for the wheels. These have been pre-chromed, very fine spokes. Let's move that around so you can get the reflections. Okay, so you have two parts per wheel, so that when they line up, so they're designed to uh, key together. This is actually the visible side. That's the opposite side. Very fine. Okay, so still a lot of bits to go. Here we have clear parts. Got the clear, this is uh, the headlight. And then there's lens color covers for the, uh, uh, the the dash, I guess you call it, where your instruments are. And then I'm guessing there's some indicators there as well. So those all need to be painted clear orange. And then you've got your brake light, which is already in a clear red. Okay, let's pop that back in the bag. Alright, so some more chrome parts here. Again, these are for the exhaust. Probably some other plumbing as well. You see the reflector there for the headlight, just how well they've done that. It's got those uh, the scul sculpts in it and the big globe in the center and also the little smaller driving light. Looks very realistic. And the chrome you can see is really, really smooth. And there's no flash at all. Sometimes you get uh, chrome, there's flash everywhere by the time you cut off the flash. You have all these ugly join lines, but these are just beautiful. All right, I've got a bag of tires and also some rubbery parts. You've got uh, vinyl hoses, springs, 
It's a variety of springs here, so two small springs there. They probably go inside the fork, so you have working front suspension. And then there's a larger spring for the rear swing arm. There's a screwdriver, which is included, really tiny one for doing up all the screws. Now talking about screws, so here's the bags full of screws. Now I haven't gone to open this up because I'm guessing there's probably about 100 screws in there. Various lengths. Some are shanked for movement and then there's super long ones there too which probably go through the framework. Alright, so here we have the front mudguard. Super smooth. Again, it's been slide molded. So across here we've got the holes for mounting it onto the forks. Quite sophisticated the way they do that. And we have some rubbery parts. These are a nice touch. So these are for the, as you can see, it's all flopping around. So for the seats, can you see how flexible it is? And it gives a real texture of the actual seat itself. And this is sort of very difficult to replicate with paint. And then you see the slots, there's slots on the back here, which will just help that fit inside uh, the areas they need to be. This one's got three pins. And then there looks like there's also the grips here for your feet. The backrest there as well. And then there are probably shock components there. Right, then we have this, which is a nice selection of photo etch. Now these are the, the ventilated disc brakes. They're on very thick stainless steel. Okay, so if I try to bend it just like this, you see how it's really resisting. And then there's also some black colored photo etch with some very nice and very fine uh, hexagon uh, cutout. And then this is probably a clutch, clutch ring in there as well. Very nice. And from here you can see the, uh, the double stage etching. Let's see if I can get it. You can just see the, uh, the larger mounting points. Gives quite a lot of depth to a flat, flat surface. All right, so what else we've got? We've got this part here, which is some more white parts. So there's the battery. The battery is molded in white. And we had the uh, top before, which was in black. So it just presses together. And then I'm guessing these are maybe battery terminals. So just a couple of white bits there. Let's pop those back in the bag. All right, so we're getting close towards the end. Now I've got a bag of decals. You've got options of numbered decals, uh, pinstriping, and then you can always paint it the way you like. There's some really nice chrome type badging. You've got the BMW badges there, and then the central uh, tank badge as well, and some masking. So pre-cut masks. And mirrored revision mirror inserts. And they'll be stainless steel, highly polished. Okay, and then we've got this box here. A very special box that you can't really tell until you get towards the bottom. Now this has got some very special parts in it. And you might be able to see some shiny stuff. Well, this is the tank. And the tank is die cast metal. Okay, it's, it's got a lot of weight in there. And it's been finished off with a very brushed, a brushed aluminium look. Okay, so you could leave it like that. It looks spectacular, or you can paint it up as per the real bike. But that is just really nice. So with that, there's this part here, also aluminium, and then a couple of very nicely molded, I think these are engine components. Okay, so see these, they've got super fine cooling fins on them. So you've got a left side and a right side. So there we go. Very classy. So initially this kit looks expensive and this is particularly why. You've got all the photo etch, you've got the die cast metal parts as well. Just makes this very, very luxurious. Okay, let's quickly put these back. And then from here, all we have left is the manual. Okay, so the manual is pretty robust. 
Okay, there's a manual there. Again, it's the same as the box art. And we'll go through this quickly. So some of the recommended tools. And you can see the diagrams are CAD drawings. It makes it very easy to follow. So you've got your, your first step is building up the engine. And then you'll notice that these gold components are sub-assemblies which you've already done before. So this part was already built here. You just got to drop it on top. So it makes it easy to follow. Similar to what Tamir have done before, where you've got your sub-assemblies and you're dropping them. In. So you've got your shock getting built there. Re-swing arm is going together with a shock. You've got the, uh, the disc brake at the back. Uh, your calipers. And then attaching the swing arm onto the engine. You get your frame starting to go together. Your cooling system. We've got the uh, the radiator getting uh, fit onto the chassis. You've got the rear mud guard. And then here's the wheels. So this is where there were those two parts getting meshed together. You have to pay attention on these particular shapes because that's how it marries together. That's how you get your alignment right. Once they all get sandwiched together, so you see how that chrome uh, spokes are uh, in the middle, they get sandwiched, and then the tire goes around that to hold it all together. Right, and then the wheel just gets mounted on the swing arm. And then you start building up the engine cylinders. They go on each side. Exhaust system. And that gets mounted up. And then you've got your front wheel, exactly the same sort of construction as the rear. And then the fork. So you see there's a really small springs that go into each fork. So that's to give you your suspension action. And then you got your wheel getting attached to the forks with the calipers. Front mud guard, the uh, main headlight. Got your instrument cluster right there. You see the use of screws all the way through the build. Got your handlebars going on. You've got lengths here of the vinyl that uh, needs to be cut. So you can just measure it up here and just chop it on the, uh, the manual. You've got the tank going on. Side there, side cowling. Starting to do the seat area, the rear support. All those uh, rubber seats going on. So you've got your options here. So you can either have the passenger seat or without. You've got all the, uh, the pedals going on. And then they're fitted there with all the... Uh, the vinyl tubing. And then you have your legend of all the parts. So they're showing you all the shapes and what all the parts are called. So you're easy to recognize them. So all the parts here again, your decals, all your masks. And then you have here your options of the versions that they've included. Okay, so you can see the different colored options. This is for getting this particular silver paint job on the side. So you use this particular mask here. To get this racing look, there's different masks, and then different masks again. And then you've got your color painting chart, which is very, very simple. So you've got the uh, codes, it's written in Chinese, English, Japanese, uh, you've got uh, French, is that French? That's probably Italian. And then there's uh, codes for men colors, and then accretion as well. Okay, and that's it. So that's the Ming BMW R9T. So absolutely beautiful kit. Quite a nice big scale, one knife scale. And it has some really luxurious parts such as die cast metal, photo etch, and rubber parts. So if you're into a real challenge of building and like something a little bit bigger, this is a really nice kit for you to do. So again, that's a Ming one knife scale BMW R9T.